Hey everybody, Robert here again with A to Z Smart Home. And uh, today we are going to do a little unboxing and review on the new MyQ Smart Garage video keypad. Uh, this is a brand new product. Um, I already used some MyQ um, devices for uh, remote garage door control, etc. And it works great. So today we're going to do a little unbox and we're actually going to get it installed and test out and see how it does. All right, let's see what we have here. So let's go over the features first. Uh, so it has motion and activity alerts, which is pretty common uh, for cameras these days. Uh, if you have a Ring camera, uh, a Google Nest camera, uh, they all give you activity and motion type alerts. Um, controlled guest access. This actually, to me, is one of the biggest uh, features of this device that I'm really looking forward to because I know it sounds weird, but there's oftentimes I've had the need to have family or friends or even someone else get in my garage to put a package in if I'm out of town or something like that. And it's nice to be able to control that access with um, the like an access code. Uh, so I'm, I'm anxious to see how that's how well that's going to work. Um, HD video with night vision, which again, that's a pretty standard feature uh, these days with um, cameras. Two-way audio, which is really nice and again another pretty common feature uh, but it's nice because if you do have somebody coming in that you need in your garage but doesn't have a code you can still communicate with them and you can still open and close your garage door remotely uh, to give them access uh, the illuminated keypad uh, that's going to be nice uh, for nighttime access uh, and then of course it has a rechargeable battery now i have read some reviews on the rechargeable battery they say that it doesn't last very long some say it even is like a week which I find that hard to believe, um, but we'll test it out and we'll see. It, you know, I can give a uh, a longevity report after I've had it running for a month or so to kind of give it a um, time to kind of settle in with normal routine. Um, so those are the features. Looking forward to that. Uh, one thing too is you want to make sure you are compatible. Um, these are the devices that currently, um, excuse me, the manufacturers that currently are supported. This is probably going to cover 90% of your garage door openers, honestly. So um, there's a wide range of um, garage door openers that you're going to be able to use this with. But you definitely want to make sure and confirm that. I did watch a different review where the gentleman did not review that. He had an incompatible garage door opener, so he had some issues getting it set up. But at any rate, I have a Chamberlain, so uh, it's not going to be a problem. It's uh, it's going to connect pretty easily, I'm sure. The other MyQ stuff that I use uh, works great. It connected easily. And, of course, this integrates with it as well, so I don't have to not use it. So it's going to be a nice system to – or a nice addition to the system. So looking forward to that. So let's get it unboxed here and see what we got. All right, so – this is the unit, and honestly, it's a little bit bigger than I thought it was going to be. Um, I don't know why I thought it'd be small, but <laughs> you know, sometimes you look at pictures, you really don't know until you get it in your hands. Um, but it actually has a lot of weight to it. I'm sure, obviously, this has got the battery uh, is in it, but um, it feels sturdy. Um, I think that for the most part, all the MyQ stuff I've looked at and used has always been you know, pretty good quality. Uh, so this is the battery compartment, and yep, sure enough, so the battery's in there. So that's obviously adding some weight. Uh, so we'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, it's a nice little device. So I'll leave that there. Let's see what else we got here in the box. Oh, so it has a, uh, I did not know this. Um, it has a nice angled plate, uh, which is really convenient. Because when you're mounting it on the side, you're not going to have to catch half of your garage door in the video. Um, so that's really nice. I actually have to use an angled plate like this on my Nest doorbell uh, because my doorbell is kind of stuck off in the corner. And if I didn't, I would get like the left whole wall, <laughs> which isn't obviously uh, convenient for video recording. Uh, so that's great. I am glad to see that. I'm anxious to see how that's going to work. Let's see what we got here. Here's a charging USB cable. And they give you some screws and some drywall anchors if you need it. I don't think I'm going to need these. I think just the screws will be more than sufficient. Uh, looks like that's a little anchor screw. Uh, probably more than likely, yep, it's to secure that. So that'll be good. Yep, see, so there's a hole right there. So that way just any random person can't come up and take it off they're going to have to have a 
Phillips screwdriver with them, which is pretty common, but does add a little bit of security anyways. So, all right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to get the app opened and because I already use my queue, so I don't have to download anything or get my account set up because that's already done. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this added to the uh, app and get it set up on the Wi-Fi and connected uh, before we do the install. So we'll, uh, we'll get started with that. Okay, so one thing I wanted to um, show you before I get to the actual app and installation. So the battery was, you know, installed when I got it. Um, and you're supposed to just be able to pull up on this tab, according to them. Um, and, of course, it had, like, this blue sleeve that pr protected this area here. Uh, so it was, you know, inserted like that, um, which is, you know, easy enough. But when they say to pull up on the tab, I mean, it came out fairly easy that time. But the first time I did that, I actually had to use a little screwdriver to pull down in here to be able to push that and and pop that loose otherwise I couldn't get the battery out which is ridiculous so um, just a little something to think about uh, so let's get over here to the app we're gonna add my queue and we're going to see it currently shows my garage being closed so we're going to add device and accessory and video keypad. Uh, so now it's going to walk us through getting it connected. Um, so it's charged. Oh, wait. Let's go back and we can see how they say it. So you have pull the door down. Yep. Yeah, see, just you're supposed to just be able to pull that out and slide the sleeve off. It wasn't that easy, trust me. Um, so, all right. Well, yeah, that's good. So. We know we have a compatible door. No, mine does not. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and click through all that. All right. So, get started. You will need to remove the cover. Okay, so we've already done that, actually. So, let's just go ahead and put the battery in. Started with that. Ah, oh, there's a blue light flashing there. The LED will be solid for 30 seconds. Once it changes, flashing blue. Tap next. It's flashing blue. One to allow. And there it is. Oh, that's fast. Pair. And that was really quick. Device is connecting to the network, and as you can see, the light is flashing green blue. <clears throat> so, this setup so far has been pretty simple. Uh, I like how fast it connected with Bluetooth. Hopefully, it'll connect to Wi Fi as fast as it did. This may take a minute course you know manufacturer minutes are not actual minutes hmm. i know i have strong wi-fi up here so uh, i'm in my office slash bonus room uh, where i have my computers and all kinds of stuff so i know it has a good signal there seems to be some difficulties to your device start over <laughs> okay now this is uh you know i'm kind of glad this happened because you know this is one of the things with some of this technology that it works great and once you get set up you typically don't have any problems uh, i've never had an issue with my q but again it's just little things like this so let's go ahead and we'll click start over so accessory video keypad it's charged next continue yes i have all of that i'm ready Next, next. Now I'm probably going to have to pull the battery out. I just thought about that. No, I don't have to pull the battery out. I can hit that reset button. Six seconds. That was one.
Okay. So, try this again. It is now flashing blue. Try again. Next. There's my device again. Pair. Finding nearby networks. And here is my Wi-Fi. And apparently here we go again. All right, what's up everybody? Uh, so Robert here again with uh, A to Z Smart Home. So um, yeah, last night we obviously had some connectivity issues um, and I did get them resolved and I went ahead and got the uh, camera paired to the app on my phone um, but I'll explain what I had to do in order to achieve that. So I anticipated possibly that my Orbi device, because it's more business related, maybe it wasn't allowing the device to connect because what was happening was, well, initially it wouldn't connect to the router at all. After several attempts of reset and reattempt, I finally got it to connect, but then I couldn't actually get internet connection on the device. So the device never actually communicated with my queue to activate the service. Um, so I swapped my Orbi system out for my uh, Nest Wi Fi Pro pods, uh, just to see if that made any difference, and it did not. Uh, I still connected to the network, but I still had no internet connection, so the device would not communicate with my Q servers and activate. So I did a little research, and it turns out there are some ports that they say, oh, you should open these ports up. Um, so obviously, I understand what that is, and I went into my um, Nest router, and since the device was actually connected, I could see it, had an IP address, showed good connection. And then I went ahead and added the port exclusions. Um, once I did that, I then reset the device again. So now my router knows the IP address it's going to assign the device because I assigned the MAC address for a specific IP address. And then I also had the ports open for that specific IP address. So th those of you who understand MAC address, IP address, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'm not really going to get into that because that's not really what it's about. Um, but basically the bottom line is the average home user is not going to know how to do that. They're not going to know to log into their firewall or router. They're not going to know how to you know, properly find the device, assign it a static IP address, set specific port rules for that IP address, et cetera, et cetera. Now, maybe my situation was uncommon. Um, maybe most of them don't have that issue. I don't know. I haven't seen anybody else complain about it, uh, but maybe they're just dealing with it and they're not telling you about it because obviously that's kind of a negative point of this, but that's kind of my whole point is that I don't want to show just the like great parts of smart home technology. There are trouble spots. And again, when matter gets widely uh, adopted and rolls out, I think it's going to solve a lot of this problem uh, because of how it communicates. All right. So we are all set up here in the garage. And right now I have the camera pointed at the garage door opener just so you can see uh, the process. Uh, you can also see on the app here what I'm going to be doing. So let's go ahead and tap here and we'll start the uh, process. So we'll say next, next. Yeah, I already know that. So here it tells you about the different buttons. Now I know I have a red button, as you can see by the picture. Uh, that's what the Chamberlain, most of them have the red button. Um, so let's go ahead and click next. Like red, orange. Hit the button. It's in pairing mode. Next. Enter my pin. Hold the home button. 
Next, put the pin. Success. All right, so I guess my issue was I kept putting in the wrong pin because I thought I had um, put in one pin, but I didn't. I put in a different one. So let's say yes there. And I'm going to go ahead and open the garage back up. So your device is now ready to mount. All right, I don't need mounting instructions. It's pretty simple. Two screws. Um, let's skip that for now because I don't want to sign any pin numbers just yet. So as you can see, the app is really cool. It tells me that the garage was opening and uh, it'll say open for so many minutes. Uh, so I really like the MyQ app and um, their software is pretty good. So this connectivity issue aside from last night, uh, their MyQ stuff has been pretty good. So um, I'm real happy with it. So we'll uh, continue with the mounting and I'll be right back. Okay, so this installation is actually pretty simple. Um, it's just a couple of screws. Um, as you can see here, I have a nice solid mounting area. Um, so I'm not gonna have to put any kind of anchors. It's gonna screw right into the wood. Um, so that'll be great. So let's get the bracket. And again, as you can see, the, you know, the, with the angle, it's gonna sit real nice where you're still gonna get some of the garage, but that's unavoidable. So I definitely want to mount at eye height. Um, so it's easy to see the keypad, you're not reaching. And I think that's gonna be uh, the best video as well because you can look people pretty much right in the face. So I think that's pretty good, probably right there. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So let me get my mounting screws and we will get it screwed to the wall. And one thing uh, I meant to show you is I really like the fact that it allows you to mount it whether you do this way or this way because it's got the clips on the inside on both sides so that way you can fit the camera in either way. Uh, so it's not just a you know, one way mount, which is nice. Bubble perfectly in the middle, excellent. So now we take the camera and we clip it up in here and slide it in place. And there you have it. Now we have to put the set screw in Okay, so I actually had to get a little smaller screwdriver uh, because the set screw, the uh, Phillips head on it is real tiny, which is good because uh, you don't want it easy for someone to be able to take this off. So let's get this set screw put in here. And like so. It's pretty firm. I mean, obviously, if somebody really wanted it, they could just rip it off the wall uh, with enough force, but it's screwed on pretty tight. The set screws there. The top doesn't come out. So, again, nice fit and finish, uh, which has been pretty typical for the uh, MyQ stuff. So, I'm glad to see that's the same with that. Uh, so, let's actually look at the app on the phone and see what it looks like. All right, so got the app open, and let's go to live feed. See, it's got a green light too when you're viewing the live feed, which is kind of nice. So that's a pretty good picture. I really like that a lot. Uh, sorry for the, the mess back over here. Um, obviously, <laughs> we have some Packages have come in and our Christmas tree standing there, but at any rate. Um, yeah, so that's a really nice picture. I really like that. And um, I think I'm going to close the garage door and see what it looks like with the garage door closed. 
So let's go over here. Let's close it with this here. So oh, can't see my code. Easy enough. Yeah, so that's a nice view. Uh, good wide angle. See, you still get you know the garage door, but um, that's unavoidable because obviously of where you have to mount this. But as you can see, it's got a pretty wide span of the driveway. So you're gonna catch anybody coming up to the driveway other than from the back of the house for the most part, which is real nice. So, um, all right, that looks real good. Let's uh, close this up. All right, and that's that. So now all I need to do is get in the app and set the um, guest codes and things like that, um, and we'll be ready to go. So it's nice. really like it. Other than the connectivity problems last night, uh, it had that connected right away and not given me such issues, uh, this would have been a real seamless uh, process. So glad to see that. Okay, so there you have it. The uh, MyQ um, keypad is installed, working, works great, looks great. Um, again, connectivity fiasco last night aside, it's been a real solid device. So far, um, I really like the way it mounted. I like the quality of it. Uh, they just need to work on the software. But at any rate, that's, uh, that's smart home life, right? So uh, one thing I wanted to mention real quick. Um, so during some of the recording, I had one of my batteries go dead. Um, I had my little light go dead because I was using them so much last night. I didn't think about charging them. And I can tell you, I've used this a lot. And this is an Anchor um, external battery. Um, I forget what the capacity is. 26,500. So yeah, pretty big, pretty good. Uh, I was able to plug up my light and let it just continuously charge off of that. Um, also, this Telesyn, um battery charger, it doesn't have a battery of its own. You have to plug it in, but it's nice because it'll hold three batteries. So I was able to just do a quick battery switch and back up and running. So those kinds of things are vital if you're going to be doing any kind of content at all. Uh, where you're using batteries. So um, I would definitely highly uh, suggest investing in that. I will obviously put some links to these devices in the description below. And uh, that way you can kind of see what I've been using. And uh, if you want to, you know, get your own uh, MyQ video keypad, I would love to see how the installation process goes for you. I hope that uh, you don't have the same connectivity problem, but uh, again, that aside, it's been a great device uh, as far as getting it set up. Um, so I look forward to using it. But uh, listen, I do appreciate you watching, and I would really appreciate uh, doing the old thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>